Hello and welcome back to EastEnders Weekly, your weekly podcast all about EastEnders. This week we're discussing a very exciting week between the 3rd and the 7th of September. Mm. It seems to be a big week for EastEnders every year. It is. It's what, the first full week in September yeah. normally. It's, it's a big week for the soap. <laughs> And it's been a really good week this week, hasn't mm, it? It has. It We've really turned has. into like a private detective agency. We really have. We've put, on a, we put on our long coats and our deer stalkers and we're kind of puffing away on our pipes yeah. as we kind of work out who actually shot I Stuart. Know. So we had the big shooting this week. So we're going to try and dissect this as much as we can for everyone. Yeah, we're going to give it our best. Um, we'll go through all the little clues that have been left. The nooks and the crannies. So yeah, it's a bit like a Murder, She Wrote said of this episode oh i don't know we're taking it very seriously murder, murder she wrote I, if, if they had jessica on the case that would have been solved in the week <laughs> let's be honest mm. so obviously we had um monday's episode which was like a build-up of Stuart's mental unhinging yeah it, coming to full pelt at the end of the episode it was almost just to remind you that Stuart's a bit nutty just uh just to remind the audience that mm. he is dangerous and he's not someone to be tampered yeah. with and he was obviously setting up like the beginnings of his plan where he almost made mick punch him no he made mick scratch him didn't he no he scratched mick so oh yeah that was he, it so he knew that his dna would be under, be under like, his he obviously did that on purpose didn't he yeah he, he, he was winding mick up deliberately he was he was goading mick to kill him essentially um he sent mick a videotape via mms yes of the meanie eeny meeny miny mo so what? it was mick and linda's it was mick and linda's room That's yes what I said. it was but it was linda you were you were adamant it wasn't that room so, well, I just thought just it was too obvious. Record again. I, I believed it to be too <laughs> obvious, but I was wrong to believe that uh, yes. sometimes the obvious is the right answer. And also, her migraine storyline was actually a, a thing. Yeah, we I just know. thought she was on holiday or something, <laughs> so did. she wasn't there for filming. Well, we just thought it was a convenient... Because well, when they did the migraine storyline, they kept saying, oh... She's taking these yeah, pills. She's, she's upstairs. right out. She's upstairs. Nothing can wake her up. So we just thought, oh, here we go. A yeah, she's on holiday. Just, yeah, so. get her out of the way. But, but no, mm. there was there was reason to it. Yeah. So that's why she didn't wake up when while he was stroking her. her hands and poking her about yeah. in the bed. I mean, I don't know why Mick wasn't aware of Stuart creaking around the room as well. well. They can all seem to um, sleep through a gunshot downstairs. So. What, or not. Well, one of them. As the evidence, one of them didn't. As the evidence put forward yes. may betray. Um, well, no, all of them didn't. It was one. There was another sound that only one of them <laughs> had heard. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. They mm. all heard the gunshot. Mm. So, uh, yeah, Stuart is showing signs of schizophrenia. You kind of started seeing signs of that when he was doing his, as we called it, his pagan ritual a couple of weeks ago. Mm. Uh, and he was burning photos. But this time he was looking directly at himself in the mirror and he was having a full conversation. Yeah, and like it was really two personalities. It really was, wasn't it? Two yeah. personalities, a proper Jekyll and Hyde. It was excellently portrayed. Um, and he was having this full conversation with himself, basically saying, it's not your fault. It's, it's not you to blame. Mm. It's... It's the Carters. The Carters bought this on themselves. Do you remember you saying that a few weeks ago? I said it was like months ago. I said maybe Stuart has a split personality because he says stuff sometimes and then he changes and can't remember himself saying that. Yeah, he forgets that he had said something. So maybe that will be a way of them if they wanted to keep Stuart. It'll be a getting a split personality. So he, he's help. nice, but his personalities. Do you think they'll keep Stuart after all know. this? Well, they've just announced that they've cast his daughter. Oh. Yes. So is she cast for a funeral? <laughs> oh no. To appear <laughs> at his funeral or is he are they gonna introduce more highways? Well well then he's not staying if he's if she's coming for a funeral. Well that's what I mean, I don't know. But if she's coming if she's coming to his funeral then is she coming to be all nicey nicey and then her? Mm. She the continued revenge? <laughs> like one family member after another oh. comes and tries to kill off the carters. So that's quite interesting that they've cast his mm. daughter. But if so it's that's... for his funeral then we know that. Oh yeah, we don't old... know that. I'm just surmising oh i see so like, you think it might be for yeah. a funeral? because they cast shaquille's dad and brother for just the funeral didn't they mm. so. but then she might be coming as you say to help him yeah. to help him out of his hole exactly. because mick even says it that he needs help he needs help with his nut and he um <laughs> <laughs> mick says nothing he can say can push him enough to want to physically hurt him mm, but wow. unfortunately there was something yes. that could be said he uses uh, that he uses it against the, him. um dino he line. does. So he basically says that he's uh, not looking after his wife. He's not doing his husbandly duties. And this really upsets Mick to the point that he also talks about it with Linda later mm. after he's gone to visit um, Stuart. Yes. And that's when Linda does the line saying if he steps foot in this house again, they'll be carrying him out. In a body bag. Mm. So th and that no was... one comes between her and her boys. 
No, exactly. Because so she does have one daughter, but yeah, but she's not. She's not. <laughs> I think by, I think she means in the media facility. Yeah, yeah, unless um, what's his daughter called? Nancy. Nancy. Unless Nancy should walk back in through the door, but I think that's maybe unlikely. Johnny did it. <laughs> maybe Johnny did. He was so upset. Johnny was coming home from his law party. <laughs> Law degree party, coming home late and walked into Stuart. And... Where did Johnny go? I'm trying to think now. I'm trying to oh, remember. He went somewhere. We, we, he's doing his law degree. It was something it was to like do with his law degree, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? I no. Don't, I don't want to talk about Johnny. No, 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 no. Just... He's got far more important things. <laughs> so, takes us to the end of the night. It's all dark. Yes. And that's when Stuart's talking to himself directly in the mirror. Again, and this yeah. is in the Queen Vic toilet. Mm. So again, he's showing these signs. And this time, though, the conversation, although I wouldn't say it was jolly, the first conversation, but it was a bit more happy and a little bit more um, excitable. Mm. But this time it was a lot more focused. Yeah, the conversation. he knew exactly what he was um, he, he wanted to do. Going in for. Yeah. There were more clues as well by the end of the night from some of other characters or the other residents of the Vic. Right. I mean, Whitney says that she isn't scared of people like him anymore when Halfway brings up uh, about Stuart. Mm-hmm. And also Dylan. We forgot that Dylan Box is now living oh, yeah. or was living with them for the night because Dylan's retracted his <laughs> statement, don't forget. Yes. Um, because he said that Stuart's been doing a torrent of threats the mm. similar to what he was doing yes. with the carters and it's worked on dylan quite it's, fast but dylan's not got family has he no we, we don't know where the other boxes are <laughs> we don't know <laughs> whether they're i don't want to know where they whether are. they're packed and folded into he his attic or not enough so yeah they have they've planted that like this random character who's also sleeping in the house and he um he's got security and, and he's got something in his bag which yes so he mm. says this is and he taps it yeah yeah <laughs> it'll help him sleep tonight it'll help so. him yeah so we, we're led to believe that it's a weapon of some sort or um, linda's migraine pill <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> or another bottle because they downed that tequila mm. i mean they were really yeah. making a night so linda was quite drunk um tina was, tina quite was drunk. very drunk and which later she kind of mm. uses as a an excuse for why she wasn't quite so immediate yeah. with the rest of the family when they woke up yeah. mick is going out because he can't sleep so he's taking the dog for a walk or has he mm. dot 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 and shirley is by the bar with baseball bat. <laughs> yes but but she's not that good of a security no, uh, she measure because she goes, she goes out break. for a fag in the back <laughs> yeah. and whitney <laughs> and halfway are upstairs sleeping in the same mm. room she's adamant though that she did she was sat. She was stood next to the door, so she couldn't have seen anyone walking in or out of the yeah, door. And it was all locked. Really, she's the only means we're led to believe at the moment of entry in and out. Not mm. surely the door that yeah. she left open. In the meantime, though, we should also bring up that Stuart had had a conversation with Dennis yes. earlier that day. He did. Gave him some money. He said, "I just need some more help again." And he. We also see that he has knuckle dusters later that he's given to Dennis, but yeah. we don't know what Dennis has done. No. Whether Dennis is the one that let Stuart into the Vic somehow, like he did last time. But the, re- the way... Hid in the toilets or something? I don't know. Well, Dennis hid in the toilets. Maybe. Yeah, but Sharon would have been on him like a hawk. Yeah. Well, Dennis has done something. We just don't know what yet. We, yes. Dennis Dennis is the key to this. Um, as progress- <laughs> Well, he is, because progressively... Oh, is he? I don't think he is. I think that's another red herring. I don't think he did anything that important. He's just worried that he did. Oh, no, life. I think he's done oh, something. I think he's done something which is of relevance. Something that's really... That will be very telling of how Stuart committed it. Mm. I do. I think that's how... I don't think it's going to be something stupid like... Dennis was the one who shot him or something like that and then quickly ran away to make it look like it was yeah. one of the Carters. But I do think there is... He's at Something. least a, a, an important piece of the puzzle. Mm. Well, the knuckle dusters must have... I don't know what they've got. Why they've... was he given the knuckle dusters, exactly? Because yeah, so. he had his choice as well. He could have had the baton. <laughs> it smells like bacon. Yeah. And he said, you can still smell the bacon on it. So um, Stuart rings the Vic bell at night time and he has a gun and he spins it and it looks towards him. Yes. Someone comes downstairs and he says, oh, it must be my lucky day. Yes. And then we hear a gunshot. And then there's an external shot. About 10 seconds-ish. An external shot of the the Vic, a ground shot, so you can look up at it, and then you hear a bang. Mm. Obviously, where Stuart is is found a bit later, it makes it a bit... Very suspicious. It makes it a bit suspicious because, obviously, there was, obviously again, there was a conversation. As you said, there was a 10-second, 10, 15-second gap between... something must have happened. Something must have happened, a tussle. I don't know, but how did he end up? Because in the obviously kitchen, he ended no blood, in the kitchen. Like trail or anything. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but was you know, that's what I mean. He obviously wasn't shot in the Vic no. main saloon bar mm. because also there was no flash in the window. No. 
So he must have been shot in the kitchen. <laughs> yes. But how did they end end wow. up in the kitchen? Should we try and work it out? So right. we both what rewatched Tuesday's episode because that was basically the all the events. That was the up. murder mystery beginning. So we've tried to break it down as much as we can for everyone in our detective ways. So the opening shots is Linda. She's the first one downstairs. She looks shaken and scared. So because the impression she just shot him. But she's in the hallway yeah. so, and she looks frozen. So mm. she looks, she doesn't look like she's gone anywhere. She looks like she's just come yeah. down the stairs frozen. And that's when you hear in the background, you hear someone run out and slam the door and someone's ran out through the cellar. And yes, gone. through the who back we don't door. Know who. We're assuming is Dylan because he's the one that's missing now. Yeah. But, that's not but she's already it could gone, be Mick. She's already gone back into the bar at this point. Mm. So she doesn't see who. No. And they actually leave the door open i think they yeah, just yeah but you just hear like you hear it opening and, then, running. Yeah, and they're running out so um shirley's outside is when you find out shirley's outside smoking and then the next person to come downstairs is whitney it's the second one but we but don't it, see her come down yeah, the stairs that's what i'm gonna say i've got a little note here from what you said so it looks like she come out from the kitchen mm. very suspicious here. very suspicious in two two ways if you think about it one she comes out of the kitchen and we later find out that Stuart had been shot in the kitchen mm. but two later on when we know that he'd been shot in the kitchen would she, if she hadn't shot him would she have not seen him mm. if she'd... or at least the trouble i guess he was mm. around that corner but why was she in the kitchen why was she in the midnight snack mm. an oreo in a glass was she of in the freezer hiding or something <laughs> well, like um aunt, aunt babe, aunt babe. <laughs> there was a theory that aunt babe had done it oh. um online by the way i wish she was doing it so she could have yeah done it. there's a little theory going around that aunt babe had <laughs> hidden in the freezer and came out and shot him mm. so the next <laughs> person to come downstairs is halfway and he comes and hugs Whitney straight away. Mm. But they also give each other knowing like looks. Yeah. yeah. And Tina is still upstairs. She says she didn't hear a bang. No. And then she says that Dylan's missing. So this is obviously where Shirley is um, team Dylan <laughs> throughout the week. Wait, Shirley straight, well, for, well, for to begin with, yeah, Shirley and Mick start pushing the blame onto Dylan, don't they? Mm. Um, and it, I think to, even Tina does, doesn't she? Anyway, yes. She does a bit later, maybe. Mm. So um, the next clue about what is happening here is when Linda goes upstairs, she sees that Lady Di is still in her dog bed. Yes. When she goes to investigate mm. where Ollie is, yeah. where Ollie is safe. So Ollie's awake. Rubbing could his eyes him. with toy cars. Well, could have been him. <laughs> That's another theory, isn't it, on Twitter? It, it was is. Ollie. The Who Shot Mr. Burns yeah, theory. Yeah, it's like Maggie. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she sees that Lady Di is still in her bed. So obviously Mick hasn't walked her, but Mick's missing. Yes. Mick's still not the Vic. Mm. So So this is obviously where Linda goes into panic mode and thinks, oh, Mick's done this. Mm. I need to uh, cover this up. It gets worse because um, then Linda finds the gun in the icebox in Mm. the pub. Yeah, that's a bit later on. We're going in order here. Oh, okay. Sorry. Don't get ahead of yourself. Sorry, sorry. I'm just getting excited. We've got a wall of suspects up here. So (laughs) we're working out. I wonder where all the string went. (laughs) So the next um, other clue is Shirley and Halfway... They both go into the toilets trying to look for Stuart Mm. because they don't know he's been shot yet. So that sort of gives the impression that Shirley... I'm pretty sure Shirley didn't do this because she's throwing her accusations about all week to loads of people, isn't she? Yeah, I mean, for someone, if she did do it, then she's very quick to push blame onto other people. Mm. But I think if Shirley did do it, she would just be like... Also, I think that Shirley... I think she'd half admit it maybe to Mick and Linda. Yeah, she would would almost show off that she had done it. Or at least she would comfort Tina, because her and Tina were being very close throughout this whole story. Mm. And I think she would have, almost as a side note, said it was me, Tina, but don't say anything. But then could Tina be trusted with information? Well, that's the thing. The next one is the really suspicious one. It's where they show, like, quite a few shots of Whitney looking at Tina and Whitney's like quite stiff but like why do they keep looking they keep looking at each other Mm. Tina and Whitney at this point and it's a bit like one of them (laughs) I think it's one of them that have done this because Whitney's body if you watch Whitney throughout the episode she's always like placed in the back yeah and she's quite like stiff and Uh, she's she's upset but not like she's not like sad upset she's like shocked upset Mm. so she's she's surprised that she's done it and she's very yeah, mm. so I, I'm at, at the moment. I'm thinking it's Whitney. Or oh, do you, Whitney Dean? Mm. I mean, you're right. She's always in the background, and she's always look every time. Uh, for instance, when they suggest after they've gone to the toilets, they suggest going into the kitchen. Whitney's the first one to gesture at, um, halfway to say, "Yeah," and you, she looks yeah, at like, him and stuff, and yeah. like, "Oh, he's about to um find out what." <laughs> do you think? Okay, actually, no, I'm jumping ahead of myself. When we get to Friday's episode. I might oh, okay. say something. Okay. So this is when Halfway goes into the kitchen. Halfway's the one that finds Stuart because he cries and says, oh no, he's dying, isn't he? Um, <laughs> and this is at the same time as when Mick comes home. So I think this is the 
point when Mick and Linda then look at each other. And this is when things get a bit confused with each other. And this is when Mick looks at Linda looking upset. So I think he thinks, oh, has something happened? Has Linda done something? Yes, that's right. And then now right. she's looking at Mick thinking, oh, Mick's just come back. He's got a cut on his face. He looks... I think he's done something. It's almost, yeah, they're so, all immediately, without even saying it to mm, each other, but they don't know that they're thinking that about each other. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a bit worrying. So they're, they're in straight away trying to think of a plan of trying to get each other out of trouble. Mm, which obviously... Isn't going to work. Yeah, I think we can rule both of them out, or at least we can rule Linda out, definitely. We can rule Linda out for another reason. Again, we'll talk yeah. about it a bit later. So um, that's two ruled out. So that's good. <laughs> Shirley said, that's when Shirley says to everyone, all the doors are locked. So it must be someone who's in this house. Mm. And she blames Dylan again. Yes. She's, yeah. Because Dylan's run away. And that's when Linda finds the gun. Because Mick says to her, go get some towels to cover Stuart's bleeding. And that's obviously when she goes to get some ice to make towels wet and stuff. She obviously sees the gun that's in the ice. It's in the ice box. So someone must have, they must have had a talk with Stuart and the Vic. Yeah. Got into the kitchen somehow during like fight. I don't know. Like, I don't think it was a fight. An argument th- or but it must be a quiet argument. Yeah, well that's right. But we, we just And then the gun's hit. put back into, into the, the ice. ice well, it's hidden thing. in the ice box. Mm. Unless there's two guns. I don't think I don't think there was an argument. I think it was just that Stuart I don't know. I don't I really no, don't I know. Can't work I can't out work how, out how it got how he got shot. Yeah. If you if you see what I mean. I mean you I don't think I think a lot of things happened in the Vic, but you wouldn't hear it. And there wasn't there was no noise coming mm. from the shot outside. Unless Dylan was passed out drunk and Tina went in his bag, got the gun, and there's a second gun and she shot Stuart and the shoot the shooting scared Dylan so he ran away but didn't take his bag and Tina's hid in the bag or something well no that's the other that's the other maybe th- that, well that's the other thing first of all where is Dylan's bag because we don't really unless we know Dylan ran away but did Dylan, mm. Dylan well if he was spooked did he remember yeah. to um take, take his bag with him? with him well but then the police would have found it that would have been something yeah, they would think Tina might have yeah, but how to, could Tina have hidden it she wouldn't have time to hide mm. it I know she was the last one to come down from downstairs but she wouldn't have had time to hide it in the attic <laughs> with <laughs> her diaries yeah, but again, the police they would showed the diaries it. in the attic recently. Maybe they showed it for a reason. Mm, but again, they would have yeah, gone upstairs and had a look. And but you don't know. She could have done. Maybe she hid it at Doc's house at Sonia's. But she wouldn't have had time to do that. Son- she had no do you remember time a few weeks it. ago? They announced that Sonia has a big part in this storyline, didn't they? Oh, On did the they? I, I don't remember that. No. Yeah. Oh, so yes, I do actually, because we were saying that it's, it's Sonia gets Sonya's storyline. Yeah, Sonia gets storyline. So maybe Tina's hid in the bag at Sonia's and we don't know that yet no because Tina hasn't got time <laughs> to go to Sonia's it would have been going out the door no, I know but the, the other question is that brings it up is if it was a gun in Dylan's bag which gun was it that was put in the icebox was it mm. Dylan's gun or was it Stuart's gun and if it was Dylan's gun where's the other gun where's the other gun yeah so that's uh because tricky it, situation. that's a tricky situation so um while this is all going on we have half uh, we have Whitney who goes upstairs um, and she unlocks Halfway's phone. She knows his passcode. She does. I know. He's got his balls in a vice, <laughs> hasn't he? I wonder if they share a Facebook account. Oh, yeah. A w- Whitney and Halfway. <laughs> Whiff- Whiffway. <laughs> Whitway. Whitway. Um, so she deletes a text that Halfway sent to Stuart that says, I never want to see you again. Yes. Which makes us think, well, I thought, well, she knows his password. Did she send that text to Stuart so he stopped seeing Halfway? Or did Halfway actually send that? I mean, Stuart? Stuart did reply to it, so you think that Halfway would have seen the reply, mm. so he would have been like, who's been using my phone? If I it just had thought it was strange. Like, why did Whitney but then, delete that text? Didn't he? Yeah. And again, knowing that the police probably would be able to retrieve the text from Stuart's phone. I know, that's a silly mistake. So it's a bit of a well. st- That's again, that's a, yeah. A Whitney made quite mistake. a few mistakes, and Tina did. And Linda. They oh, all yeah. made quite a few <laughs> mistakes, to be fair. Another thing was that, again, it kind of strengthens the story of whether it was more than one person. Maybe it was, or, or more mm, than one person screen. knows about it. Maybe. So someone maybe committed the crime, but it was, mm. a, it was a two person, a two hander, as it were, yeah. who was committing it. Cause if halfway knew that Whitney had sent that text to say, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. So maybe then two were in cahoots. Oh, what halfway? Mm. No, halfway's not on my radar at all. Oh, is he? Oh, out. he is me. I think oh. halfway's, playing the he's not very good at brother. playing that though because remember every time like remember during the aiden thing and mick interrogated him and he like broke on the first question yeah but i'm not saying halfway shot him i'm just saying halfway was in cahoots or what, covering his girlfriend's tracks or something Wait, or, no, but he someone. knew that whitney was doing it whitney kind of they made it like an it might have been a quick last minute agreement it might have been an agreement they made there when and happened. then but Hmm. maybe yeah it's going on the strengths of you saying that 
you think it's Whitney, maybe <laughs> it's Whitney and Halfway conspired <laughs> to murder Stuart. Mm. Dum, dum, dum. Maybe. <laughs> so um, the next bit is when Halfway feel sick again because he sees blood oh yes he throws out <laughs> he's not very good is he and this is when mick almost kills stuart he, well he he attempts to suffocate yeah him. and he would have carried on but um someone interrupts him and comes in and says oh where's the ambulance and he sort of stops because someone comes back into the kitchen and it's yeah like, would he have carried on would he have no finished the job in? i mean he was doing it again he was doing it in, in a room of with another person in there so they w- would have seen because no, halfway was the only one and he said oh halfway felt sick and then that's when he did it his back someone, was turned yeah to it, but it? so he wasn't seeing it mm. but yeah the second someone came back in he stopped himself mm. but yeah i mean even dean didn't push mick to um kill him he saved dean in the end <laughs> yes from he, drowning he, he couldn't do it could he so no Hmm. But then that was because Shirley was there screaming, saying, no, Mick, don't do it. And I think Shirley would be a bit more encouraging with the murder of Stuart. It's not just one. Th- well, no, I suppose what Dean did was harsh and he kind of goaded the family then as well, didn't he, at the time? Mm-hmm. So, But yeah, no, what Stuart's pushed. Well, Stuart's them... obviously broken Mick. He has. But, but then again, <laughs> that's later... what Stuart does, isn't it? That's exactly is it. This is just on. a big game of torture. This is it. This is it. Mm-hmm. This is exactly what I'm thinking. Because again, it's brought up a couple of times later on in, in the week. Um, so there was another bit I've written down here, which was quite strange, is when Mick says to Whitney, go to Whitney, he needs you. Oh, yeah. Um, and Whitney says, why? Why does he need me? Yeah, Mick says to Whitney, halfway needs you, and she replies, why? What's he said? Yeah, what's he said? So, like... Yeah, see? See? My idea's not (laughs) so dumb after all. (laughs) But, like, that could just be Whitney feeling guilty because she knows that she's done this, and she thinks halfway's noticed something. Or that she knows that halfway's not really the strong mind yeah, character might have broken and told everyone and already broken it's only yeah. taken 10 minutes of seeing his so um that was a really interesting thing there's lots of little things like that throughout the episode so um the next points that i've got on here is shirley and tina are sat down talking and shirley's saying to tina well it's it's definitely dylan it's definitely him he's the one that's done it yeah and that's when tina goes no he doesn't have the bottle he wouldn't ever do that yes but then he might have because he's been drinking too much mm. he had a lot to drink I mean, Dylan, you're... Or you're... Tina's so sure it wasn't Dylan because it was Tina. <laughs> oh, she really? Knows Dylan was asleep. Or Tina slept with Dylan. That wouldn't put it past <laughs> it. Say. Well, come on. No. But, um, there's Tina... no time for that. But Tina... <laughs> no... well, there is always time for a fair. Dylan married? We don't know. We don't know. Do we? Don't know the back... I doubt the box it. Box Tina also, if you noted, got pro- progressively colder. Like, she would be really kind yeah, of she dismissive was like... about the whole situation. Yeah, that's because she hates she would just, she would just be fine if Stuart died wouldn't she really? oh yeah absolutely so um I think that's another like she's quite cold she doesn't actually kiss just doesn't want to save him yeah I mean she if she's the bravest one of them all also if you when they're looking for Stuart she's quite brave ma- leading to maybe it's Tina because she doesn't seem to care she's just kind of like come on be- Stuart I think that's down to the torture thing where you can't break me sort of thing I think she's reached that point where she's like actually mm. you don't scare me so or... I'm just gonna act put the front up Hmm. Or she knows that Stuart was not a threat at that time and that she could mm. she could walk quite roam freely around the pub knowing that Stuart wouldn't be able to retaliate. Maybe. I mean, the next part of the Tina situation, which makes her a bit suspicious, is when Mick says to Whitney, oh, can you phone the ambulance? Where are they? Yeah. Um, and she phones them and they say, oh, we haven't got a record of this being reported. Mm. And then Whitney says, it's obviously a recorded phone call on the 999. So she says, oh, we did phone. We phoned 10 minutes ago. And then her and Tina stare at each other again. Yeah. Like knowing looks. Well, Whitney lies when the police arrive. Mm. And they said, who phoned? Who she f- said, it was me. Yeah. And why? And then they kind of insinuated, why did you did, was, did you say someone else phoned? Yeah. And Whitney said, and looks at Tina. And, but mm. again, Tina looks really cold. Yeah. Tina looks blank. Mm. As if, I don't care. Let them know. I don't Very care. Very suspicious, these two girls. It's one of those two. It has to be. Mm. What you reckon is... It's always the women, though. The women are the strong That's characters. That's what I mean. It's like the um, the live episode when Stacey and Mrs. She was the one that killed Archie. Yeah. Whitney's always been compared to Stacey when she first arrived. Like, oh, she's the new Stacey. And it's just that sort of... I can imagine it being the reveal there's going to be Whitney that did it. Be- mm. Because they. she always has this comparison to Stacey as an actress and a popular character. So that's... Where my first thought comes from. I mean, from. Whitney's been through a lot, like Stacey, mm. and uh, she's hardened herself. So you're right, it's it's a good potential that Whitney... And also, Whitney's always wanted to get into the Carters, hasn't she? Mm. So would this be a way in for the Carters? Yeah, protecting, protecting their own. Protecting their own. 
we have to quickly say about Sharon and Keanu because they're intertwined in the story as well. Yeah, they're coming they? up in a minute because Linda takes a little walk somewhere. Yeah, she does. So, um, yeah, their affair is continuing into the late night. It is. It is. Half, half. <laughs> <laughs> and I find it really funny that Sharon, because they want to um, obviously be alone together, they keep getting interrupted. So Sharon says, oh, I know a place, an alley near the canal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why does she know this place? Well, maybe is it where Den got shot originally? <laughs> I'm presuming it is the same canal. I don't know. It just seems a bit... Is there an episode in Classic EastEnders we've not seen yet where she goes to the canal and... What, young teenage Sharon? On the pill. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> is it yeah. one of her old She convinced horns? Dr. Leg to finally give yeah. her the pill. So that's her first suggestion for her and Keanu, an outside romp. In the canal alley. I mean, at least it'll be dry. It's been nice weather recently. Yeah, I guess. So there'd be no rain. It would sure, be very muddy. Surely Sharon could like rent a hotel for a night. Well. With cash. So there's no trace. But, oh, maybe I was about to more, say Maybe it's the, it's the thrill of it that Sharon's after. Doing outside with, with Keanu. <laughs> with Keanu and up against a wall. Where her dad was <laughs> not murdered, but was murdered. Up against a canal boat. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Watch it so, run. yeah, she's there. And obviously, Dennis is acting suspicious scared and worried because he's heard a gunshot so he doesn't want Sharon to leave yes which again we don't know what, we don't know enough about what Dennis has done yet mm. to um theorize and Dennis was only one of two people who was woken by that gunshot the other one being Hunter mm. Hunter was awoken by that gunshot yeah. as well he um, was woken but not everyone in the big one <laughs> no no <laughs> very odd I mean that line when um Mel turns around and goes a gun that was purely added in just for the trailer because <laughs> they had it on the trailer. And it's like, that's just... There's a the few trailer. moments that... Yeah, like when she throws a glass at yeah. the wall, that was just for the trailer. Mm. But that's 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 Me- that's Mel and Sad Sack Jack. <laughs> we have to talk about them a bit oh, later. Yeah. <laughs> no. So this is when Linda takes the gun. She wraps it up in all her towels and she actually <laughs> leaves all in her dressing her gown. She goes. So she leaves the scene of the crime. She does. And this is when... Keanu's still waiting for Sharon yes. to meet at the canal spot. Mm. Uh, Sharon can't text back, apparently. But Sharon's too busy making cocoa for <laughs> Dennis. But he sees a vehicle pulling up and he believes it to be Sharon. So he starts... Yeah, he's like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unzips his coat. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he starts to approach it, but realises it's not Sharon when Linda comes out of the car, mm. looking frightened scared yes. shaking good holding. acting by her this oh week. i have to say acting yeah. props to linda fantastic i said this i said on twitter this is the episode that makes her the uh matriarch of the show yeah this is this is the making of linda this is the um strong woman who will do anything to save her family it's Absolutely. like that classic um eastenders thing isn't it so they're, they're building her back up again we've talked about this before they mm. weakened linda they yeah. weakened linda but they're bringing her back and so yeah fantastic yeah. do anything to save her family. family family so um yeah she like rubs it down with the towels to like get rid of the prints i'm assuming she yeah, thinks that's how you do it um and then she chucks it into the canal into and... the shallow end which i thought was a bit oh, no, she should have like thrown she had a but there was throw. like a canal boat like watching as well so mm. I don't know how set is. Can they? I mean, a gun will just sink into the mud. So if they search that area, it's oh, going it to be there, isn't it? It's not going to travel. No, it would. Well, can I, I don't think there's a. Is there a free flow in the no. canal? I really don't know. So that's a mistake because they. Well, anyway, like I've got. No, you're an, right. I've, it's a yeah, big mistake. I've got a note on here because obviously the police arrive and they question Mick where Linda is because she's the only one missing, mm. and the policeman asks Mick to call her, and um, she answers and say, "Oh, just say we were together." Yes. But um, I've got a little note here saying, are they going to track this call later on? Which is something we'll lead to yeah. maybe later on also. Which is when we why we think um, the arrest happens later. Yes. So um, so then we have a scene with Keanu and Sharon where Keanu tells Sharon, um, I saw Linda mm. do something. She looked worried. He didn't see the gun though, but she saw that she dropped something in the canal. Yes. And that's when Sharon says, don't say anything to the police. No. You don't grass in Wolford. But we don't we don't grass on our friends. No. Although apparently Linda's not his friend. So Well, I know, yeah, that's oh, true. I Keanu. mean what's Linda River done to Keanu? But Keanu's such an innocent he has to he can't and he said himself mm. since Mor- big moral compass. He's a of very Keanu. moralistic guy. And he said himself, since the ho- the heist, he knows that it's not a really not a good him. idea. Yeah. yeah, it's not a good idea to lie. Well I'm sorry, but if you get involved with Sharon Mitchell, it's it's gonna be a life of crime from now. <laughs> well, which is again a discussion they have in the second cafe <laughs> later on in the week. Yes. So um that's pretty much the breakdown of the events of the night. That's the shooting. So we obviously have the police interviews to go through and then Friday's episode where there is an arrest. 
Mm. Um, so we're just going to have a little break now so we can um, clear our palate a bit. Yes. Rest our minds. A and then, of sorts. And then get back on it. So we're going off to a new section, which we've got this week, which is a brief history in Wolford. Yes, a new feature to celebrate something very special. Mm, how exciting. But uh, first of all, let me just describe what our new feature, A Brief History of Wolford, is all about. It's basically looking at a... Is it A Brief History of Wolford? <laughs> it's looking at a, a building or a place. Establishment. Establishment. Playground. <laughs> canal <laughs> <laughs> in Wolford that has a, has a history, like most places in Wolford does. Um, and we're going dis- to discuss... A couple of or three things that we both remember from fondly that. Fondly remember. Fondly yes. remember from that oh. place. Now the re- starting with the biggest place. Starting from the biggest place. It's the lively heart of the square and the centre of drama, confessions and fights since its conception. If walls could talk, there'd be many, many stories that they would be telling us right now. We are talking about the old Queen Victoria public house. Now, the reason we're talking about the Queen Victoria public house is because we've got some very special merch that you can now buy yeah. which has a original drawing of the queen vic bust mm. on it you can get a t-shirt which i'm wearing right now how do you think i look very good yeah i see you're sitting on the queen vic bust's <laughs> face she's in the best place <laughs> she, she could be. she's in the warmest place you could be but yeah it's a cool design that we've got it's an excellent it? design yeah and you can it's on jumpers as well or phone cases we uh mm. you know we've done it because it looks really cool but also because it helps us out if if you want to help us if out. you want to help us out if you don't at least you get something for helping us but out. you get something cool for helping us out yeah. an original queen vic design yeah the one of perhaps many. So, yeah. So, if you want to find it, you need to go to shop.spreadshirt.co.uk slash EastEnders Weekly Podcast. Um, and you can find all the designs on all the different bits of pieces. Like I say, mobile phone case, you can get badges, you can get jumpers, mm. T-shirts. You can't get gloves. Pop which sockets. <laughs> you can't get pop no. sockets. Disappointing You can get, like, me. mugs. Mugs. Coasters. Yes. So have a look, have a rummage through. Have a look and let us know what your top yeah. five are. And they do look really cool. And uh, we'll post some pictures of us, like me wearing the T-shirt and Ben hugging the pillow <laughs> like it's his display his display picture. And yeah, and have a look and see if there's anything on there you like. Mm. But anyway. Or back... any ideas of future logos. Also true. If you have any ideas of something you'd like to see on I mean, the Queen Vic was my idea. So it's your idea next. I've got one bubbling, trust me. Okay. One bubbling. Bubbling is a bit of a clue as well. Then we'll see which one's most popular. Yes. Like there the you apprentice. Go. <laughs> we'll bring we'll try to get Lord Sugar on to be like mm-hmm. a judge. Or Trump. Uh, no. <laughs> so we are talking, as we say, about the Queen Victoria pub and we're talking about some of the moments that we have stuck in our heart that we fondly remember about its history. Mm. At, our, at our old local. And I yeah, yeah. Have a quick half down the uh, old local. So What's your first memory? Well, I'm going first, and I tried, but this one's really random, but I thought it might be not be one that's on your list, so we don't get any double ups. Okay. So, it's it's kind of two things <laughs> in one go, but I'm going to take it as one, but it's two things. You always, like, you can never do one of anything. <laughs> it always has to be more. No. So, it was the scene, it was the episode where Ethel dies. Right. The first part, where she has her 85th birthday, and she gets taken into the Vic. And it's all filled up with loads of characters. Janine's there. Oh, Ian's there. Classic. Pauline's there. Dot. So it's all the classic ones. All, all the there. originals. And um, she's she gets taken in. They pick her up in her wheelchair and like <laughs> parade her around the square and into the Vic. And it's just really nice. And she's got a wig on. It's <laughs> nice to see she's happy. It's 85th birthday. But like the second half is her wake, which is done at the Vic. Mm. And it's interesting because it's the same day that the Slaters are moving in to the square. Oh, right. So yes. it's sort of like a... Old East End, like there's like a cutoff point where it's like sort of the new East Enders, isn't it? When the Slaters arrive, yeah, the new of hi- history because the, mm. the Slaters are seen almost as the like the main big family, aren't they? The main the big Bills. family, yeah, they're almost like they're start starting again, like it's 1985 mm. again, so they're starting. But all that was interesting that they, you know, Ethel's funeral was on the same day that this new mm. legacy family was introduced. But I just thought the scene of her birthday was really nice and like the vic's really full and it's really covered colorful mm. and it's like yeah it's happy well, it's a bit like it's nice actually when they use the vic as a 
a vocal point for everyone to come and collect themselves together in. Mm. Um, they most recently did it, obviously, for Shaquille's death when they had the coron not the coronation, they had the royal wedding and yeah. they had the FA Cup mm. final. And actually, that scene in the pub when the pub is split in half, mm. and uh, like one half, days. yeah, when, when one half is watching the football match and the other half is watching the wedding, it was nice because there was this kind of spirit and this enthusiasm. Mm. Obviously, it kind of ended a little bit badly because there was a bit of a, a well, yeah, yeah, obviously, Shaquille, but, but it's nice to see like the occasional happy moment in there. I thought mm. so, I'd start off on a positive. Yeah, no, that's a nice positive as well. <laughs> I, I also remember Ethel's death, and that was a wonderful scene as well with uh, Dot mm. as well. But that yeah. didn't happen in the Vic, no, so sadly, we cannot discuss it any but further. But it was the same day as her birthday. It was the same day. That was the same episode. Mm. So, yeah. Talking about bringing in the new, um, something uh, reminded me of, and again, this wasn't actually an episode, but when they did the promo with Ronnie and Roxy mm. uh, and it was a full 30 second promo and they had lively music and it was when they were being introduced as the landladies of the Queen Vic um, because Peggy, uh, they came back from living in Ibiza and Peggy yes. wanted them to live mm. in the Vic with them. Um, and it's just such a wonderful promo they used the Vic for. Again, mm. it was very lively. It was very over the top. Mm. Um, well, it wasn't like Roxy, like, were they in like a cowgirl outfit and she was like, pretending to ride like a mechanical bull. I like, think so. It's something like that, wasn't it? And, and they were slamming yeah. shots on the bar. It was just like showing them. what their characters were. Mm, yeah. <laughs> How <And> crazy. <laughs> <I> mean, yeah. <laughs> what what, what, what the, basically the audience had in store. It was a really nice way of basically learning what a character was before they'd even been in the show mm. for, for real. It was a really good introduction for mm. them too. And all the guys were like really excited and lively. All the younger members of the bar were all excited. Tracy, I think was in the background kind of peering <laughs> over kind of, of like, no, I don't know if I approve, but at the same time I'm enjoying the spirit of things. Mm. And then there's the shot of Mo looking uh, really disapprovingly at the, the <laughs> two kind of just shaking her head as if to say, no, no this isn't, no, this isn't right. Know. This is what I want to be involved with. Mm. But yeah, th again, it, it wasn't really something that happened uh, as a storyline. It was just a promo, but it's such a great promo when mm. they use the pub again to show that it, the enthusiasm and the community spirit that the EastEnders seems to have always in, t t know, tied mm. to it. They did a little nod to that on Ronnie's wedding day, didn't they, on the episode when they're having the part, the after party. Yes. And it was filmed really similar to that advert with their favourite slow motion cameras. But like that it camera. had like all the cast dancing. It was mm. kind of non-scripted, I think think because there was no dialogue but it was just the cast i think they must have just said have some fun and have a party yeah. and they're all dancing weren't they and all the kids were dancing a similar sort of feel you no, got from that to be fair i don't know if it had been done deliberately but you've made me think was that was that almost a conscious full yeah. loop yeah, so like they started partying mm. and they ended partying mm, possibly mm, that's very interesting they're, they're filmed quite similar weren't they Really, well, as we, we jokingly used to uh, say that they had that camera, that slow motion camera, and they must have paid a lot of money for it yeah. because they used it Should for everything. Fired, like 12 actors uh, yeah. <laughs> to get that camera. And everything for about a three month radius was filmed using that blooming camera. Mm. Like when Bex was like, when the bullies were being left the hall and they were all oh, being yeah. booed at and they used the slow motion camera. When Louise fell back into the candles, they used the oh, slow yeah. motion camera. Promo, everything was yeah. being used for that. That slow motion camera has a lot to answer for. <laughs> Any more from you? Yes. My second one, which is kind of obvious, hopefully you haven't got this one, it's when Dirty Den is finally killed oh, for the second time I, and buried in the Vic cellar. I must admit, I have got it on my list, mm. but it's okay, don't you worry. It's, it's a very good episode. Yeah, so that's a big one for me because that's one of my favourite storylines is the um, Den murder cover-up with Chrissy and Zoe and Sam. Yeah, and it's a really good story, yeah. that. And when... she thinks he's dead and she's like crawling away and he like wakes up and says, what does he say? It's something like, you'll never get me out of this Vic and like grabs her ankle and stuff and then she to be fair she whacked him on the head again he whacks him on the head do you know what he whacked her on him on the head with what she whacked then on the head with no, Zoe hit him with a doorstop uh, it, it, it was, was it both the door it was stop? the doorstop yeah oh, was it was it? a dog shaped doorstop it was Pauline's oh yeah that was it yeah 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 and it was they had like to get a Westie it. wasn't it that's it yeah. and they had to get it back into Pauline's house without Pauline noticing <laughs> and so there was there was really funny scenes when they had it under the coat and just as Pauline left the room they would take it out the coat and then Pauline would come walking back in again and they could <laughs> hide it back under the coat um, but Den was right you couldn't ever get him out of that pub because he was buried underneath it it was for quite a while yeah quite a few months quite a while is he not still oh, i suppose he wasn't he was ex no, excavated yes, he for was. police oh that's a shame in a funny way i wish that he stayed there christy, yeah, well i do i mm. wish christy christy hadn't been found out because then that would be she nice. must be getting out of jail soon it's quite a while ago wasn't it oh yeah i suppose yes someone needs something to uh keep an eye on sharon 
these last few uh, weeks. I don't know if um, Sharon buried Den back with Angie, though. I wonder. What, Cause, together? In yeah, because when he first was dead, but he wasn't dead, mm. she buried that body with Angie. But then when he came back, he went to the grave and said, oh, that's a joke, bury me with her. Um, but I wonder where what she did with his body the second time. I don't know. That's interesting. That that's a bit of interesting yeah. information to look for. I mean, sticking to Sharon, <laughs> I thought it'd be, <laughs> I thought it'd be rude not to bring up one of the greatest storylines of Sharon Gate, the original mm. Sharon Gate, because the, obviously yeah, the first one, the first one, because we were getting in the midst of a second one <laughs> as we speak. I mean, at the time it pulled in 25.3 million viewers mm. this episode this was the grant phil sharon affair yeah so was grant this the one that no no i'm thinking it was a baby monitor but that was tiffany that was tiffany yeah, sorry. yeah poor grant <laughs> 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 he found things out through audio yeah. concepts every time i can't remember how he found this one out well grant um was being a bit mean to sharon to be fair and everyone was keeping an eye on him and michelle reported him to the police and when the police picked him up he hit michelle and the police officer so then Grant was put into prison. Mm -hmm. um, and in this time, Michelle's boyfriend at the time was making a book. And in order to get stories for his book, he was interviewing people. Oh, right. And Sharon agreed to be interviewed if Michelle was the one interviewing her. So they do a normal standard, like, oh, was it like living in the, uh, the West End? Oh, yeah, you've lived your whole life, blah, blah, blah. And they forget to turn the tape off. And they start talking after a few glasses of wine. <laughs> cool. They start talking a bit more candidly. And this is when Sharon exposes that she had an affair with Phil, the kinder, at the time, the kinder Yeah, brother. the kinder of the two. And yeah. anyway, during Phil and Kathy's engagement party at the Vic, uh, Grant goes off to buy some more beer down, I'm sure, down the, uh, at the mm -hmm. supplier. And when he was driving back, he was rummaging through the glove box, looking for a tape. <laughs> and what tape should he come across? Why, oh. no, no other than the tape of Sharon's confession. Well, he listens to it in the car on his way back. He listens to it in the car on the so way you back. you think it was like a sexy mixtape <laughs> that Sharon made for him? <laughs> what she sings With, to him. Um, her, her hits on it. All her hits. <laughs> well, um, something, something Out of Nothing out and of Cool nothing. Girls. Bring, bring, bring. Yeah. Is it live? But no, it wasn't. It, it was sadly fun. wasn't. And he decided to play it. In front of, again, in front of a pub oh, full of yeah. people. They like doing that. I know. And it just went... It, I can't imagine the uncomfortableness of... Well, I watched it. It's just uncomfortable to mm. watch. And Kathy obviously calls Sharon a, a slut <laughs> and smacks her around the face. And, uh, well, we, the fallout happens, obviously, later on when mm. they have the fight at Mitchell Motors or the Archers. But um, that scene is just... It, you could just cut the tension mm. with a knife 25 million i know can you imagine 25 mm. million now no <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so a, a tremendous scene if you if you can find it watch it mm. it's, a, it's the whole episode is really the the build up to that last scene when the tape is played and he just grant has some kind of radio s slick skills because he lines it up perfectly so it's the <laughs> confession like straight away without any build-up mm. whatsoever it's just fantastic so really many things are, like confessed on tape on EastEnders. yes it's like the max and stacy video at christmas oh yeah with that's Lauren. really awkward but that's not in the video. That wasn't on tape, though. That was on DVD. Was it DVD? Yeah, oh, yeah. She burnt it onto the disc. It was a VHS nope, tape. nope, nope. This is Lauren. Oh, she yeah, knows her true. computer she's she, modern. Before she even got her degree in computer sciences, which she did in a week, mm. she was able to burn a DVD from her video camera. The way you were just talking about um, how things are really awkward scenes to watch. Before I go on to my last point, I just want to make a special mention. There, I just remember coming to my head now of the scene when Ben finds out that Abby fakes the pregnancy and he takes her into the toilet and pretends he's gonna like have sex with her in the toilet and he takes all her clothes yes. and pushes her out into the vic in front of everyone in her like underwear in her underwear that's really awkward to watch that was horrible that was honey and billy's wedding yeah yeah and phil's really drunk as well yeah, <laughs> yeah so Phil's he's like coming on it. to fit um honey which is funny yeah while she's doing her speeches but yeah that's like that was another one when you're watching it and you're just like watching it like with your eyes closed. yeah through your hands really, yeah. but your hands are slightly oh. open so you can just see it it's really embarrassing and when um, Aunt Babes tells her to fall over and pretend that she had a miscarriage on her fake pregnancy. Oh, there, there I love that. that. Well, well. well, Aunt Babes pushed her, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah, and didn't tell her what was going on. No. She was like, oh, she must have lost her baby. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. So my last one is a short scene, but it's a big sort of build up. Is Do you remember the time when Bobby hit Jane around the back of the neck with a hockey stick oh, in I, Ian's house? I vaguely remember that, yes. With the bloody, it was a really horrible duff duff of like a bloody hockey stick, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm holding it up above him. Um, so my moment is linked to that where he walks into the Vic and says in front of everyone, I've killed my mum. 
Oh. Uh, no, he says, I've killed mum, I've killed again, just like I did Lucy. And he says it in front of everyone, and Ian's there, like, uh, oh, you've yeah. just admitted it. So that was another one where I thought it was like one of those big payoff moments mm. where he's admitted something in front of everyone. Because you have to remember that the Who Killed Lucy story didn't really end on the live episode. Mm. It carried on after yeah, that. Yeah, because they kept it secret. Because <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Ian and Jane knew that Bobby did it, but mm. they didn't let anyone know. But they, get Ma- they got Max, hence why the whole big Max yeah. revenge. <laughs> revenge story happened. But, um, yeah, that's fun. Committing so you murdered someone yeah. in front of the square is always good. I mean, again, book. it's another, as we were saying at the beginning of this uh, feature, that it's just such a good place for something to come out, the secret to come out, because everyone is in mm. the pub. And you always know always... it's going to happen, yeah. because like some characters who haven't been like seen in a while were like, <laughs> sitting in the background or something. Ingrid. <laughs> yeah, or like Carmel sitting there to ju- wait, we're waiting to judge. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was another one of them, and like the music stops mm, yes. when they say it, like stuff like that. So, so, um... Someone trips over the jukebox plug or something like that. It always <laughs> coincidentally happens. Yeah. And he walks into the vicar. He's got blood all over him and blood mm. on his hockey stick. Yes, no, I remember that. Yeah. That was really good. So that was really cool. That was a really nice story. I mean, um, I've got an honourable mention. I'm not going to say it as one because it's just almost too obvious, but that's the divorce papers being served mm. by Denta Angie yes. on Christmas 86. I mean, that was just remarkable uh, writing. And again, the mm. build up to that was fantastic where she faked that she was dying and mm. he found out. And yeah, so, <laughs> but that's an honourable mention. But my very last one is uh, the Vic fire when Phil sets fire to the Vic oh, yeah. to revenge uh, against Peggy. Yeah. And Peggy's also pride and joy. Her, Vic. Exactly. And he was on a drug fueled rage. This is when Phil was a bit of a cokehead and uh, he, she was trying to stop him cold turkey by locking him into the lounge upstairs and <laughs> boarding up all the windows mm. and, you know, giving him a bit of a potty in the corner just to, you know, a bit like train spotting <laughs> just to kind of like get him out of the uh, thing. But it doesn't work. Um, but it's a double whammy this episode because not only does he burn down the Vic, but also Peggy discovers that Archie was murdered, not by Bradley, but actually by Stacy. Mm. And Stacy's desperate for her, her not to say any more information uh, to well, tell the police at all. Mm. And it's when we learn Stacy's daughter Lily wasn't Bradley's. It was Ryan's. It was Ryan's. Yeah. So it's like it all, this, coming out. all this happened in a week. Mm. Um, and f- coincidentally, it was it was the, the same kind of week as we've had this week. So the sixth to the tenth, or the second week in yeah, September. They always use it as like a big, big storyline time, time, isn't it? This week. Yeah. But um, speaking of um, Peggy and finding out about Stacy, it's cool because they like hate each other and they never really talked about it until the week when Peggy came back for her final ever week, they mm. had that scene where um, Stacey apologised to Peggy. Yeah. Which I thought was really nice. It wasn't something they had to include, but it was just nice to sort of end their like rivalry and yeah. stuff. So that was nice. I remember that. We could do a whole episode about Peggy's death, <laughs> let's be honest with you, because yeah. that was such a lovely Pat. time. Yeah, And Pat came back for yeah. it. I, I, st- I, Anyway, goosebumps. Goosebumps thinking about it still now. But um, the Queen Vic, as we said, has seen a lot of things happen to it. And I'm sure this is a subject we could return to another day. Mm, there's loads. Um, but for now, let's, let's just say that's uh, what are fond memories of the Queen Vic. I mean, do you guys have any good memories of the Queen Vic that we maybe didn't mention and we could mention on another yeah, occasion? Yeah, well, you're top three. Exactly. Send them to us, eastendersweekly <laughs> at gmail.com. You can tweet them to us at eastendersweek or go on our Instagram at eastendersweeklypodcast. And may I just repeat that if you do fancy some really cool merch yeah. um, of helping the, us out, helping us out of the Queen Vic bust, an original design, um, you can go to shop.spreadshirt.co.uk slash EastEnders Weekly Podcast and just have a little look and see if anything takes your fancy. And it, it does post outside of the UK. So if you're listening outside of the UK, you can um, also uh, order them too. That was the feature for A Brief History of Wolford. Right, we're back. Yes. Spotlight's on, interrogation time now. That's right. Get out the clues, <laughs> get out the mind maps and yes. time to delve deeper into the shooting of Stuart Highway. Mm. So we've got the police interviews coming up and we see glimpses of everyone's interviews like intertwined through. Yes, there's a few common things that's uh, kind mm. of sprinkled around them all. It's like they were all woken up by the gunshot. Um, yeah. Apart from Linda, this was a big big one because linda woke up by the bell ringing so none of them heard the bell ringing mm. apart from linda she was the only one who mentioned it. yeah so she, which indicates to them that she was the first one down and 
she didn't hear the gunshot, but everyone else did. Mm. She must have pulled the trigger. Also, that the gunshot must have happened while Linda was downstairs. So was it Linda that was downstairs already? And again, but, oh, see, this is where my maybe mind cause goes... Li- maybe because Linda came down first, mm. Stuart hid in the kitchen because he didn't want it to be Linda. So that's only just coming to my head. But they, but Stuart says, oh, it's my lucky day when he sees who it is, which I can't work out who he would say that to. Maybe he saw... Oh, I don't know. See, this is where my head goes. Mm. Boom. Maybe he saw... Like, like who who would he see coming downstairs who would think, oh, it's my lucky day, it's you? His Dylan? brother? Maybe oh. he saw Dylan and then that made... D- Dylan got worried, ran off. No, because no one ran off until Linda was downstairs shaking. No, you just heard the door close. Yeah. We don't necessarily know if someone ran off. Someone could have walked in. Hmm. It's, do you see what I mean? It's yeah, but oh. everyone was it. Well, everyone could have been in, could have been Shirley been, walking yeah, in from, from having a, a cigarette. Yeah. But yeah, it's hard to work out. Like I, the only one I can think of is, is my lucky day would be his brother. Mm. If he was planning to get shot, surely he'd want it to be someone like Tina, who he knows would definitely do it. Maybe. Maybe. So, <laughs> we cannot work this out. It's so oh, it's so it is. There's so many little things. So um, the things I've got written down for uh, halfway's interview is that he said he went downstairs when the gun went off. And he was on his own. Mm. And then he hid in the toilet because he said he was scared. Yes, his PTSD had kicked in because he yeah. heard a loud bang and so believed it so, to be. B- so that's interesting. He heard the gunshot and he said he was on his own in bed. Mm. So Whitney wasn't there. Oh, okay. No, I didn't get that. Yeah. I didn't catch that. Okay. Uh, but, but when Whitney is being interviewed, she says the gunshot woke her up and, and she... Halfway wasn't next to her. Yes. So <laughs> so do you reckon Halfway may have meant that Whitney wasn't there because he ran and hid, maybe? That's... I don't know. But it, they're both contradicting each other. Mm. But they also both... Oh, well, they don't both say it. Halfway also says that Mick wasn't there. Yeah, he does. He looks up and says Mick wasn't there. And that's there. when Halfway gets upset and says, are you trying to accuse me? And they said, you're not being interviewed as a suspect at yeah because he's his brother well they talk about the relationship as well both with halfway and whitney mm. um and halfway basically says well he's my brother i love him mm. but whitney does say that they didn't always see eye to eye yeah but they were but she but she does say halfway does love Stuart. yeah but she doesn't say she does <laughs> That's true. I mean, if you look at it from <laughs> this respect, Whitney and Halfway's alibi with each other is the most coherent. It seems to be the most strong mm. and the le- and, and the least lied about for the knowledge that we have at the moment. Mm. I mean, we know that a lot of Linda and Mick's evidence was put upon. Yeah, Linda and Mick's are just them trying to cover for each other, though, I think. Mm. Like, unknowingly. Well, that's what I mean. So they're lying a lot mm. to each other. But that's just for each other. Mm. And Shirley's interview is really, like, Nothing. She just blames Dylan the whole oh, yeah. time. Oh, yeah. It was Dylan. Why look she at Dylan? Does, yeah. So Can I go for a fag? It's Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Linda, just that's when she says it was a normal night at the pub. Mm. She was distracted by the police cameras on her. She doesn't say why, yeah. but we kind of guessed it was because of the Dino giving the evidence when she was raped. Mm. And she tells the police that Mick is the one that locked up. And she went straight to bed. And Mick was in bed with her and mm. they fell asleep together. Yeah. Again, that's something the police constable brings up with Mick, though, isn't it? He says, like, how are you so sure that Linda fell asleep next to you mm. if you were asleep? Yeah, it's really... It was a bit daft. It's like, well, you just kind of assume that, I guess. Yeah, well, I know. And this is also when Mick does another lie, when they say, how did you get that scratch in your face? And he says, oh, my son. Ollie. Did it. In a bit of play. Does he know, not know about forensics? Mine. DNA. Well, I don't Come suppose on. he really thought about the the fight, the scuffle he had with Stuart, mm. really. He probably thought nothing of it. So, um, yeah, that's like the police interviews and things. And then we've just got the rest of the week of when Stuart has a bad turn in hospital and mm. halfway and Whitney are by his side. Well, Stuart falls into a coma because of the infections he got. Mm. So that kitchen can't be grade five standard. <laughs> for well, the f- babe's not there to clean. For the, exactly. For the food hygiene agency, <laughs> I must have to. And have. I must, I've noted on here as well that Whitney's body language again, when they're at the hospital, she's just at the back, arms folded, quite cold. So mm. I kept my eye on Whitney. And also, if you notice that Whitney spends, I know Whitney is Halfway's boyfriend, mm. but she seemed to be very close to him the whole time. Yeah. And she very resilient. To say yeah. Very resilient to let him, shouldn't. yeah, to go off for a long period of time mm. with someone or with anyone other than with her. So yeah. they, again, they were staying very close to one another. All the information we know from, from at the moment is obviously the information that we know that Linda went to the canal, dropped the gun off. Um, and so she and Mick agreed on the phone that the, they would say they were together the whole night. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they're, they're telling the biggest lies. And so, 
Mick is a bit torn because he then talks to Shirley, his mum, mm-hmm. uh, about this on the bench the following day after they've done the interrogation. And he's he's almost adamant he wants to confess to the police that actually Elle had dropped the gun. Yeah, because he... I think he knows that he didn't do it. Mm. And she didn't do it because Linda tells him in the at the hospital that she had she thought it was him, mm. and then he confesses. Oh, I thought it was you. Yeah, and then he kind of says almost to, to the audience, "What have we done?" Mm. <laughs> so they know that they're they're yeah. in a bit of trouble here. And um, that's when Shirley now is thinking it could be halfway because he kept saying sorry and he was all upset. Yeah, it was a strange one that she suddenly came to this epiphany mm. that she's she... close because it is Whitney. <laughs> we don't know that for sure. No, I know. It's just but um, yeah, it was strange that Shirley came to this epiphany that after all this time of her insisting in front of the police that it was Dylan, that she then starts thinking it's halfway because he's being really apologetic. But knowing halfway's character, he is a quite apologetic person anyway. Yeah, he's, exactly. He almost is acts guilty when he's not. So the police inspector goes and visits Sharon's house. And this is when Sharon's trying to eke out a bit of information from Linda on the sofa. But she doesn't want to make it too obvious. But Keanu... Gentle. Yeah, but Keanu doesn't want to give evidence or present evidence to the police until he's more clear on the facts himself. So he's trying to push Sharon to give the information from Linda. Mm. And um, the policeman also says, like, um, uh, she says, oh, my son heard the gunshot. And he's like, oh, we'll need to speak to him. Mm. Again, maybe is that, is that not an interesting link that perhaps Dennis has more to this yeah. than meets the eye? But he doesn't get to speak to him because even the next day, he, like, Dennis, like, runs off to school. Quickly, well, Dennis opens the door and the police constable, quite presumptuously, said, oh, you must be Dennis. And, the, and Dennis is like, oh, yeah, bye, and kind of runs off with mm. his signed West Ham ball. Yeah, and they invite him into basically interview Mick, and they he basically calls Mick out. He says, "We know you we, you lied about the scratch on your mm. face. We know you lied." Um, there was something else as well about seeing Stuart because they said they haven't seen him for weeks. That's right, I haven't seen him for weeks, um, and the, the grudge between you. I know you said that they they play games or you've mm. been playing games, played yeah. against. You. And Mick sort of says, "Well, he's been tormenting us, mm. buying us pizzas." Yes, yeah, so, oh, yes, <laughs> he had to bring like up that. the pizza story. Yeah, and so the police constable says, "Well." It's an, it's not an offence to be angry towards someone for tormenting you, but mm. it is offence to lie to the police. Yes. So is there anything else you're lying about? <laughs> and then there's that well, brilliant shot of um, uh, Mick just kind of looking off looking off the camera a little yeah, bit and like, being like, oh, do I tell them now about the gun? Mm. So we're guessing Mick hasn't said about the gun. And no. to be fair, if he had, then Linda would have heard because Linda was listening to this yeah, the whole time. Was. Sharon hadn't dug out any information from Linda, no. but meets up with Keanu at the second cafe. Yeah, the secret. The secret cafe. Really secret, apparently, because she openly kissed kisses him in front yes, of everyone on the mouth it's quite a surprise to kiss him. Yeah. i think she goes to kiss him on the cheek <laughs> and then keanu's like nope full blown <laughs> and goes straight on through her lips yeah but what if phil has some old crony mates sitting in the back looking well also phil he's got um history of that cafe because that's when yeah. he used to spy on vincent exactly so he so knows about that cafe does old phil someone might see that's not very clever of not sharon. clever at all so that's when sharon offers keanu some money some compensation <laughs> his she escorting says. business is back up again <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well she says it's money that phil really owes yeah. him for, for, for sacking mm. him i thought it was a bit degrading though on keanu's side and like, i think Keanu's knowing that they've just off. had an affair like slept together and they're having like an affair mm. and then she like gives him an envelope of money it's a yeah. bit like really Sharon it's... she's paying for a toy boy I yeah think. or yeah. paying for him to not talk about Linda yeah and it's just like mm, it's a bit messy. but I do like that they've made um Sharon and Keanu's torrid affair almost intertwined mm. with the storyline yeah. it's like the first uh, hurdle in their relationship yeah and it's a <laughs> it's murder covering up a <laughs> possible murder but I love that because they've done it they've added some real meat to that storyline so it's really mm. I like some that a tension lot tension between them already mm destined to um not be happy maybe no so next up we have shirley accusing halfway so she acts quite nice for shirley she's trying her best to act nice oh, to yeah. him and invite him to have some breakfast nice shirley is eat. more <laughs> nice shirley is more frightening than angry <laughs> yeah because shirley. you know it's not something's not quite right yeah. there so yes yeah, she invites him and kind of starts accusing him tina's working at the cafe which is super odd. Yeah. Again, I mean, Te- come on, Kathy. Tina has a breakdown if she breaks a nail. You know what I mean? She can't spend a day of work. Um... Do you, maybe um, Tina said to Kath, oh, can I stay at yours? Because we're not allowed at the Vic. And Ian's like, well, you can, but you have to do one day at work. Yeah, but Tina um, didn't... Unpaid <laughs> <laughs> to pay for your... Yeah, to night. pay for your book, bed and board. <laughs> Probably something Ian said like that. That's true. So, but um, Tina didn't seem that upset about working there. Again, no. showing how cold this mm. is. This is basically just washed over her. She yeah. doesn't seem to mind. I don't know if she, that's another red herring, though. Like maybe it's so hard to work it out Mm. so um yeah she's 
Um, Shirley's always accusing Halfway and Tina phones Mick and says, you better get here. I'm assuming she phones Mick. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. he comes in. To get the whole family And um, Whitney's there. Well, Whitney walks she's in while she's up. accusing her. Again, yeah, Whitney's straight away mm. saying, what are you saying? What yeah. are you accusing him of? Again, defending him. Mm. And also not wanting Halfway to be away from her for too long. Yeah, yeah. So, Oh, that was something also we, we, we shouldn't forget as well. Um, In the, the crowded house of the Slaters... I know. They've now got another <laughs> resident staying, staying there overnight. halfway. <laughs> God. Did he skip up kip with Mo, do you think? I reckon head to toe, head to toe. Big Mo. Yeah. So yeah, they were all arguing and Mick doesn't want it to be a public thing in the cafe. Quite rightly so. Yeah. It but, is a murder investigation. But yeah, Whitney's very defensive on the whole thing. Mm. And that, that's when I think Shirley says, oh, maybe it was you then. Or something like that. Alex mm. kind of says, maybe it was you, Whitney. Mm. And then her and Tina look at each other again. And um, Tina says, no, you... Uh, we're on each other's side, aren't we? To Whitney. Yeah. And it's like, why yeah. have you said we're on each other's side again? But I'm wondering if that's Tina. You know how like Mick and Linda got confused with each other? I'm wondering oh, if that's right. Tina getting confused with how Whitney covered for her, not phoning the, the ambulance. So she scene. thinks that Whitney might be uh, helping her or yeah, yeah, helping each other out. So I don't know if that's another confusion of the night. I do <laughs> think... no one's talking to each other. <laughs> I know I said that Whitney and Halfway, but I do think it's a two-hander. I really do. Two I think we're going to be really surprised. And it's Halfway and Whitney or Whitney mm. and Tina. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Mm. Anyway, they go for a stroll down the market they and do. you know something's about to happen. Because oh, yes. the whole cast, even well, Robbie, is there. It's like one. It's like what we were just talking about on the um, brief history in Wolford, where we said in the Vic, if there's big characters you've yeah. not seen before, scheme waiting to react. Mm. It was in the market this time because the Vic was closed. But they can't use the Vic, can they? So yeah, everyone's at the market. Yeah, everyone, every single person. Like I said, <laughs> even Robbie, even even like the He's most. He's not been seen for quite the, a while. Yeah, yeah. The policeman was there, and he made his arrest. <laughs> I thought it was going to be Mick. Well, we all did. Even Mick thought it was going to be yeah. Mick. Yeah. But it wasn't. No. So they've arrested Linda. Yes. So what have they arrested her on? Because some people online are assuming that Keanu's gone to the police. Mm-hmm. But Obviously, then... I have my theory. Yes. Your theory is a good one. The um, tracing the phone call. where Because mm. that was the same detective that said, phone your wife now then. Yeah. To Mick. And obviously, he phoned her. She was at the canal. So they'll be able to locate. And she said she was just walking around outside because she needs some air. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming that is what they're arresting her on, is that they've traced her call and know that she's lying about where she was. Whether they've dug the canal already and found the gun. Well, that's what I'm wondering, whether they trawled through the mm. canal as well. Because to make an weapon. arrest, they need You need motive and evidence, evidence. yeah. So whether they've found the gun already. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if they have found the gun, that might take away the Keanu and Sharon situation too soon. No, because I think Sharon. This I think it makes it even hotter because I think Sharon's going to go running to Keanu and be like, "What did you say? Oh see? yeah, you've told. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we, 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 it'll be an instantaneous thing mm. whether Keanu has said anything or not. But then at least also if if Keanu hadn't said anything, it puts him back in Sharon's good books and it rests Keanu's mind because exactly. he knows that he doesn't have to worry yes. about it anymore for more so, rumpage mm. action. So my number one pick is Whitney. So you've heard it here first mm. on record. Okay, well, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure. Make one, make a choice, and then we'll see. what But if it is I had later. to make a choice right now, I think it's Whitney and Halfway. Okay, and cool. I think I think I think it was Halfway that shot him, and Whitney is covering for it. We will see. We will see. Right. So before we talk about the second storyline this week, um, we're just going to go away, play a little game, and then we'll talk about Jack Mel and a newcomer, Ray. So this week, it's my game, and thought I'd mix things up a little bit and play a little bit of Ian Beale's Real Deal. Mm -hmm. It's been so long. It's been a while, because I've been keeping to the five-a-day format recently, (laughs) so I thought I'd do something a bit different, since it's a bit of a different show this week. So um, just to repeat the rules to anyone who may have not listened and we've played this game before, I'm going to give Ben a starter value, and then he has to say whether something is higher or lower than the original value. Extra points if you can guess exactly. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Um, and, uh, but this week is a bit of a twist because mm. normally it's prices. So prices at the cafe mm. or prices in the Vic. But this time I'm asking you the duration an actor has played a part. Okay, that's easier. Okay, so yeah. um, we're doing Peter Bill. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no. But not Peter Bill Sr., Peter Bill Jr. Oh, good. Ian's I, son. I hate Peter Bill Sr. I know. Well, you've made it quite clear <laughs> on numerous occasions that you're not a huge <laughs> fan of the uh, old eel from Classic EastEnders. But the new Peter Bill, he's a whole new kettle of fish. So mm. uh, he's been played, I'll tell you now, he's been played by six different actors. 
Yeah. Okay. The first actor was Francis Britton Snell, and he played Ian Beale from 1993 to 1996. So he played him for three years. Now, the second That's actor... That's when he was a baby, I'm assuming. Yeah, so he was a child. Okay. So the second actor was Alex... What am I meant to be guessing? Higher or lower than three years. For oh, okay. So the second actor... <laughs> Who played I- Peter Bill was Alex Stevens. Now, mm-hmm. did he play Peter Bill for higher or lower than three years? Lower. Lower. Can you guess how long do you think? One year and four months. You don't need to go that precise. Oh. We're doing it only by years. <laughs> oh, it was, one year. It was one year. 1997 to 1998. A little tidbit for you. During their tenure, they were kidnapped by Ian's then wife, Cindy, after a failed attempt to have him killed by a hitman. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. Do you remember when he got her, got Peter back and she was at the airport screaming through yeah. the window? Yeah, through the window of the airport. Yeah. Give him back! <laughs> so the third actor p- to play Peter Bill was Joseph Shade. Jo- mm-hmm. Joseph Shade. Do you think it was higher or lower than one year that he played the character? Higher. Do you, can you guess how long? <laughs> well, it two years. It could be anything from one to infinity. Oh, no, wait. No, what year are we in now? 1998. Okay, um... Three years. No. Wait, you're right about saying it's more, mm. but it was six years. Six? Six years. And do you know something really interesting? Nothing happened to him in that six years. A I bit like find... Amy. <laughs> <laughs> They're just waiting for Amy to get to that the magic 13. A- yeah, the I magic think, age when they can start having groups around the square. Yeah. So, yeah, he was basically told to go upstairs all the time or, you know, go play with your Legos <laughs> upstairs. Nothing happened. Honestly, um, absolutely nothing. However, the fourth actor, James Martin, do you think he played Peter Bill for high or lower than six years? Lower. It was. How long? Four. D- no, two, <laughs> two years. Uh. He, 2004 to 2006. In 2004... Peter was injured during a fairground ride, <laughs> which, he was, <laughs> which he was on when it collapsed oh, during yeah. a carnival. But luckily That's when um, Lynn Slater lost her baby as well. That's it. It was the same episode. Mm. Um, and and Spencer he, Moon was on top of the thing. Yes, shouting down, going, trying to, whose attention was he trying to get? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can't remember. Because they had a secret about him, didn't they? Stupid. And he was shouting down, going... So, uh, James Martin played him from 2004 to 2006 for two years. So, the fifth actor was Thomas Law. How long do you think he was in it? Was it higher or lower than two years from 2006? Is this the one before um, Ben Hardy? Yes, I can confirm it's the one before Ben Hardy. Okay. And how long, what was the last one? <laughs> two years? Two years. Mm, no, it was longer than two years. Yeah, how long do you think? Three? <laughs> Four years. Three? Four, Four years. years. How old is Peter Bill? 2006 to 2010. <laughs> Um, Peter Bill was 21. Actually, he was 21 when he left. He's 23 now. Okay. If, uh, no, he's, no, he's 24. Just... So I've just done the maths quick in my head. He's 24 now. The years just they fly, fly by, by, don't, don't they? they? When they're so young. A lot happened to Thomas Law's Peter Bill. He was put forward to be athlete at the 2012 Olympic Stadium. <laughs> Uh, Olympic Games, uh, but he was uh, uh, too much pressured by his father. He also dated Lauren Branning, Zaza Carter, Whitney Dean. Um, oh, Whitney? Yeah. Later, the Whitney Dean was described by Ian Bill as a walking STD <laughs> while they were dating. And um, after learning that Ian was having an affair, he left to live with Lucy in Devon. But they came back. As a new... <laughs> as, as a new face, new Ben face. Hardy. Now, he came back. So it was a three-year gap, and then he came back in 2013. How long for? Three years. Two years. Two years? Well, yeah. Ben Hardy's only for two he, years. He did a lot in that time, as we know. Because he came back, really, for the Who Killed Lucy Bill storyline. Mm-hmm. So there you go. So I think you got them all right for the higher and lower part of the game. I got five points, but not many bonuses. Well, you didn't get any bonuses. I got it? one bonus. Oh, yeah, because you got one year right. Yeah. <laughs> so well done. So there you go. So that's the history, the life of times of Peter Bill in Ian Bill's own game, which was Ian Bill's Real Deal. <laughs> So during the shooting night and the really fun, exciting storyline of the Carters, <laughs> it <laughs> was interrupted <laughs> by scenes of Jack and Mel and Hunter scheming. So Jack takes it upon himself to tell Hunter he's going to propose to his mum. Yeah, we yeah we, we can just fast forward to that, yeah. really. <laughs> um, <laughs> even though it's quite obvious that Hunter doesn't like Jack and he's set him up quite a few times in the past. Jack still does the honourable thing and yep. says to him, I'm going to ask your mum to marry 
marry me. He doesn't say, is it okay? Or is that okay with you? He just tells him. Yeah. Buys him a box of chicken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Easy, easy date. <sighs> so, and, and obviously... He does the honourable thing, which is something he never did in the police force, which we've uh, <laughs> continuously learned. Yeah. And he decides this because he's just visited Ronnie's grave. Yes. So, so they're reminding everyone that Ronnie is dead. Ronnie is sadly. dead. Okay. I'd love Ronnie and Nell <laughs> to meet each other. Yeah. I bet they'd be right feisty. They so, would be. Bill happens, so let's not even go there. He'll upset too many fans. So, yeah, we get the scenes, like, in between, like, the night of the shooting. We have scenes of Jack at E20 <laughs> drinking he, champagne. Yes, he gets a bottle of champagne. He, he He's going to propose to Mel. Mel wants to do the costings. This is when she does the costings at half one in the morning. <laughs> and Jack's really upset. So he goes and soaks his problems with a bottle of champagne that yeah. he bought. Tune, tune. <laughs> yeah, he... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Jack. Yeah. Oh, Jack. I'm so glad about what happens this week because Jack is oh, you know, so annoying. I feel a bit mean saying it, but I, I, I was quite pleased with it. I, I, mm. I, though Jack's speech was very good. This it is, was, his angry speech. His so angry speech um, at the end. he tries to propose to Mel because they have a little heart to heart and mm. she calls him out on thinking she's a second class Ronnie to him and stuff. Yeah, she says that um, I get it. I've got the same colour hair. I own a nightclub. I'm He's the same character. The same. <laughs> I'm just the same That's character. That's why I was brought copy. back after 12 years. Yeah, if you squint hard enough, yeah. you'd see her. To try and make up for us accidentally killing Ronnie. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that all happens and he gets on one knee and he's about to propose and then an uh, Irish gentleman, Silver Fox, walks in. Quite a handsome Irish yeah. gentleman, some might say. Very nice. So yeah, he comes in and interrupts it all. He does. And also a, a, almost a Steve Owen spit. I know, she has a type. She really Obviously does. Jack was a blip on her radar. <laughs> He's a blip on anyone's radar. And Ian. <laughs> Ian was a blip too. That was um, a long time ago. But yeah, he though. does look like um, Steve Owen, doesn't she? Mm. Doesn't he? Mm. So um, that's quite an interesting casting. So yeah, that interrupts the proposal. So the moment's gone, Mel says to Jack. Yes. Because he tries to like carry on. I know, I know. It's really like, Although to be so fair, Ray did say, because um, Ray's the guy who comes, so it's, mm. it's the mysterious Ray yeah. that Hunter's been texting character. and talking to all this time. Ray does said, oh, if I've interrupted something, do carry on. And but Jack was well up for carrying yeah, on, wasn't okay. he? Yeah, all right then. I haven't got a ring. I haven't prepared anything. No. But um, will you marry me, Mel? Uh. So um, that upsets Jack and he goes. She throws a glass for no well, for trailer For the purposes, purposes of a trailer. Dramatic trailers. <laughs> and probably tells... Well, she, the, the next day, when, uh, this is going fast forwarding a bit, but she um says, uh, if the Slates could do their job properly. It's like, when were the Slates was meant to have been there? She was there till like two in the morning. Oh, yeah. And, she and was then there, she was then there first in, like, thing in the first thing in the morning, like clearing it up. I guess so. the Slaters meant... oh, the, and also, would the Slaters have just left a broken glass to clean? I know. So obviously the Slaters haven't been there yet. So that's yeah, a silly like, thing shut to Mel. say. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what, what Mel. she's been doing. <laughs> so um, she goes home. She's very angry. She knows, obviously, Hunter's invited Ray or done something so she's angry with hunter tells him to go to bed takes the phone off of him yes but that's, that's quite yeah, the punishment for hunter. for hunter he says can i have my phone then he says no tomorrow morning <laughs> so um that's the first and um she decides to phone ray from his phone so do you think she's deleted his number and that's why she wanted yes. hunter's phone yes i do I, d- I don't think i i don't think mel had taken hunter's phone because she wanted to phone ray oh, initially. Do you no oh, i think okay. she took hunter's phone As because she was peed off that hunter was mm. paying her so I, was, I thought she was going to look through his text and see if he'd messaged Ray and seeing what he said or something but see, they didn't show that no, see that would have been the sensible thing to do because then that would have explained everything that Mel had mm. um, been wondering what Hunter had been up to yes but um, yes she invites Ray around for a late night call a, a whiskey yeah an Irish whiskey maybe possibly and um, they have quite an interesting chat you find out a bit more about Ray you learn a lot about Ray mm. in a very short amount of time yeah and like the reasons why they may have broken up mm. When she used to live abroad with Lisa, her best friend, who she's not mentioned since her sanctioning. <laughs> well, no, Lisa has been looking after her daughter, though. Yes, recently. well, that's another thing that really... I forgot to mention that last week, <laughs> but that was really <laughs> annoying. Because no one's mentioned Lisa since she was carted off mm, as a mental To the loony bin. Um, and now all of a sudden, Louise is spending weeks at her house. At her house or at the asylum? <laughs> Well, why can't they just bring Lisa in and have Mel? Mel needs a friend. She hasn't got anyone who's a friend. Well, see, this is where the fickle world of Sharon kicks in again. Because when yeah, Sharon said... They're uh, not real friends. <laughs> exactly. When Sharon said earlier that, um, you know, oh, you don't dob in the, the, uh, your friend to the police. And the whole time I was thinking, well, Sharon, you jump from friend to friend every week. This week, That's why no one ever dobs Sharon in, you see. She mm. keeps everyone as her friend. She's in the loop all the time, she isn't she? She is the queen of the square. So um, I also found it funny how Mel was going on to Jack about how she doesn't want to be seen as the ice queen anymore more she wants to be seen as a 
real person. Yeah, she wants to frost. She wants to defrost. She wants mm. to thaw out a little bit. Yet she jumps on to Ray straight away. Mm-hmm. So this is after Ray has. Um, well, we've learned that Ray is a undercover detective. Yes. Sorry, I forgot. With CID. That's okay. Yes. With CID, and that his job was pretty much getting in the way of their relationship, mm. and that Mel found it finds it difficult to trust. Ray, because she doesn't know whether he's always putting on an act mm. or whether he is being genuine with her. And he kind of says, well, my love is genuine. Isn't that enough for us to maybe try again? Mm. And as you say, Mel, first of all, is like, no, get out of my house. <laughs> and then she's like, wait. And then she kisses I'll him. I'll tell you when to leave. <laughs> yeah, I'll and tell then you they sleep leave. together. I mean, this is Mel thinking that she's got the control and she hasn't. She she submits no. the control as soon as she lays down on that bed. I mean, it's so strange because... When we heard about Ray before, when we found out Sharon took the heist money mm. and Hunter had been kidnapped by Ray, mm. um, she had to give loads of money to, um, uh, what was her name, Car- Clark- Cara? Like Aiden's, Cara. Cara, Cara, yeah. Aiden's like, ex-wife. Yeah. Um, and obviously that's Ray's sister, I think. Presumably so. Or aunt, or something like that. And it's like, well, Ray kidnapped Hunter <laughs> mm. and Mel paid all this money off, but like they didn't seem to... But then was Ray doing an undercover against his own family? I don't know, because when they had the shooting, when Mick got shot by halfway, yeah. the police were there, and Clark, Cara came over, and she was like, sweep oh. this under the rug. Yes. And then that's why no nothing come of it. So, so that was, was her contact in the police. It was own... Ray, the one who was helping her out yeah. undercover, do you think? So he's obviously a dirty copper. Well, that's... A, a, which again... I'm wondering if that's going to bring a Jack storyline where he's going to, like... Well, dig some dirt on Ray and that, find out stuff. Yes, let's be honest. That's going to be the first thing Jack does next. Well, once Jack's got out of his <laughs> One of his slump, mates. Yeah, he's going to get one of his mates to find out about Ray. Or maybe Ray knows about Vincent. Vincent <gasps> and undercover cops and things. Because that is that dodgy cop that supposedly shot, killed Vincent. We don't know what happened. Now we're on the so same maybe, page. So maybe he's moved to Wolford to investigate Vincent. <laughs> I'd like that, actually. That'd but be he's interesting. doing a bit of undercover work. And so he is, mm. he is lying to Mel again. Yeah. I mean, do you think this is something? Is, is this something that he's trying to delve more information in about Mel? Is this something that we there's know, still some Mel's past? Not, unless Mel's done something dodgy, but I don't know what Mel's done really. We don't know she anything got, about Mel. She got done over by Kara, so mm. she had no money, which was is she... why she had to work at E Twenty, wasn't it? That was her reason for staying in Wolford because she well, had no money. No, Sharon stole the money, and then Mel. Uh, had told Clara, yeah. and so then Clara had threatened Sharon, so Sharon had to give the money back, mm. and then Sharon kind of almost as a debt to her, then said to Mel she had to pay the money back off, yeah. that because Phil had some of the money, yeah. uh, something convoluted. God knows what. But there is a secret past to Mel that I'm sure we don't really know a lot yeah, about. I mean, a lot have happened, must have, mm. during those 12 years away. And Ray was super sneaky, because we saw that when he woke up the next morning, he had his wallet next to him in mm. the bed, and then magically his wallet was downstairs <laughs> yeah, in the lounge for, for Hunter. Hunter to find because Mel didn't want Hunter to know that he'd stayed there. Mm. I was very impressed with this. It wasn't something that was like a secret for weeks. It, like the next day the mm. secret came out, which I thought, okay, this shows that Ray um is this is this lets us know where Hunter got all these conniving like things from obviously Ray mm. is super conniving because he planted all this and invited Jack around for dinner because he knew that they were together yes. and then um, knew that Hunter would then say. Oh, they, they slept together. Yeah. yeah. So and the then... secret was out like straight away, which I thought was really good, actually. I agree. I think it was nice that they did it in a nice tight package. Mm. Because, to be fair, they weren't even given a lot of time in the episode. So no. They probably were about five, ten minutes, every, yeah. ten minutes at the most every episode. So um, Jack had a nice little few words to say to Ronnie, fake Ronnie. Just, <laughs> just a few. <laughs> Just a few. He did bring up, she's nothing special, even when I squint, <laughs> which I thought was brilliant. And uh, then Hunter took well offence to that and went to beat him up. <laughs> this all stems back to Jack being an idiot, thinking he's doing the honourable thing by talking to Hunter, of mm. all people, about what his intentions are with yeah. his mum. I mean, if you, if, you want, if you want to do anything with Mel, try to avoid the route that Hunter discovers at any, mm. any pass. Because as soon as Hunter finds something out, that it goes against anything he wants him, his mum and Ray as a one family unit, unit then yes, you're mm. going to never be able to get into inside of it. No, and It was quite a nice introduction to Ray, I thought. Like, I like Ray. Yeah, because like, is he a villain? But like, he's quite friendly and like, charming mm. and like karen fancied him and flirted with oh him that was in brilliant the in the minute mark. Mark. and honey obviously thought he was quite good looking as well and they were like competing with each other mm. to flirt with him and stuff so it is, it's like shouldn't be flirting she's got a dentist oh, that's true she's got her hunky dentist mm. so um it's i thought that was interesting that he's not like obviously he's a villain but 
a bit like Dirty Den. Like you know how he's like a, like a lovable villain, yeah, like, rogue. charming, like a bit like Steve was. Mm. So I thought that was nice how they've written him, and he's all he's already talked to a few people in the square and introduced himself. Mm. So that's interesting. I think he's he's a permanent resident. I take it. I think yeah, least, I imagine yeah. yeah. I think it'd be an interesting addition because mm. he 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 is Steve Owen too. Let's mm. be honest. Um, yeah, and like the that way charming. But obviously got a dark side to him, but yeah. still friendly. Mm. So you kind of yeah, I think he'll be quite an interesting as he gets gets going. But it's also interesting that Hunter, you think he's learnt his traits by almost biologically through his father, so Steve Owen. Mm. But now knowing what Ray is like, yeah, you're learning actually what Hunter's he's picked up on. Yeah, Hunter's picked it up from Ray. Mm. It's just that he had it in him. It's just that Ray's been able to nurture yeah. it. And so. obviously with Mel being this stone ice queen for the past god knows how many years obviously that's impacted on hunter because he's not good at showing his emotions very well no he shows all of them at once connivingly or keeps it both all like a blank slate and that's a bit where you see a bit like male side of him mm. as well so yeah he has he's got a cold side yeah too. so that's interesting yeah so actually you know the male it was a nice as you said it was a nice little uh kind of side note mm. the Mel. once ray was introduced <laughs> I mean, you're right to be fair once, was once jack better. was rubbed out of the picture and it, it was, was ray um, and mel yeah i um i found a really funny comment online where someone was saying how mel and jack have no chemistry mm. and um someone replied saying well to be fair no one's ever had chemistry with <laughs> jack because <laughs> rainy had no chemistry with him before True. and ronnie didn't no roxy didn't and um yeah the second ray was there Mel's kind of lit up a bit more as a character, I thought. So it was nice. I mean, Jack is a very 2D character. There's yeah. nothing, even when they try to I give him... I know we're some... not the biggest fans of Jack anyway. No. But even so, it's like, They try yeah. to give him pathos. It's like today, uh, not today, this week when um he was at the grave of Ronnie's grave and I just couldn't... No. I just couldn't feel couldn't sorry for him. All he was saying is, I miss <laughs> you being a housewife. Like, that's yeah, all, like, that's yeah. all that like, came across to me. He wasn't actually missing her or loved her. Well, that's right. He was missing her being around or there to help I could have kids. really done with you this morning when yeah. I was getting the kids ready for school. Yeah, and it's, like, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. They Thanks. never worked as a couple anyway. No. But um, no, good week on EastEnders. Very this week. good week. Well, we've got a little bit of time left just to quickly go to the poll of the week, mm -hmm. which is always posted on Monday's episode of EastEnders when it's broadcast in the UK on our Twitter, which is at EastEnders Week. This is very active this week. It's really our been Our poll active. of the week. Our po well, we've active all... I, I must say quickly that um, thank you to everyone who's messaged us. We've had loads of messages on Twitter this week mm. directly to us, um, and we've replied to hopefully all of them. Um, we try to, yeah. We always do try to. So, but That's thank what you Done It does, you see. Exactly. Gets people talking. That's a discussion. Everybody's talking about it then. <laughs> So, um, yeah, our Twitter, at EastEnders Week. Keep them coming. We're really enjoying them. You can also email us if you've got a bit of a longer message. Again, we've got a couple of emails as well this week. We will try our best to get yes. in, back in Soon touch with Soon we'll you. be getting... Yeah. And one of them we will be. Because one of them is a very long email. So we will try to do a bit of investigation and get back to you. Uh, our email is eastendersweekly at gmail.com. Anyway, the poll of the week was, with the drama of the Queen Vic kicking off this week, there's a chance that the ownership might change hands. Who would you like to run the pub after the Carters? And we also encourage comment, suggestions and reasons why. So the four alternative uh, answers were Ian and Kathy, Ted and Bernie, Jack and Mel, but... We're going to change it to Ray and Mel <laughs> and Sharon and Keanu. So who do you think came up on top? Um, Sharon, yeah, surely. Of course it's Queen Sharon. Queen of the Vic. We'd love Sharon to own that Vic again, wouldn't we? Sharon and Keanu at 42%. So pretty much out and out winners. And then the last three were really tight. They changed all the time. Mm. It was really good to see it changing um, because we got loads of votes this week as well. So it was brilliant. Second was Ted and Bernie at 21%. I mean, <laughs> I don't think Ted would last very long. In no. The, he just drink it all. Pub we'll scene, it exactly. Patrick. Bernie would just be there in the back in the corridor, tutting with yeah. her arms crossed, looking angry. <laughs> Jack and Mel, or Mel and Ray, nineteen percent, third place, and fourth place was Ian and Kathy at eighteen percent. And as I said, we had lots and lots of comments, so I'm going to go through them just quickly. So at Eastenders underscore four, the number four ever said, I can see Max and Rainey owning the Vic. Loving Rainey on EastEnders and her and Max are a great pair. They would make an ace pair in the Vic. Rainey would love it. Rainey she would lap that would. up, being like in the Vic and everyone, all the attention on her. I agree. I, I actually, I never really thought about Rainey, no. but I, I would like Rainey to have a bit of a turn in the Vic. Even if it's just working there, it would be quite mm. good fun. At Carrie under, underscore Granite uh, says, sorry, but if the Carters leave, which I hope they don't, 
but I know they eventually will. I'd like to see some new blood, as the Carters were when they took over. And then he's put the end, save for Shirley. Oh. So, there you go. At EastEnders Fan 21, I'm not sure I'd like to see Kat and Elfie back there. I'm not no. sure I'd like to see them back there either, to be perfectly honest with you, EastEnders fan. At Shazab74, uh, had a bit of a longer tweet, but I've narrowed it down to anyone as long as the Queen Janine runs the Vic. I would mm. love Janine. Yes. I, I thought Janine and Rainey would be a good combo. Oh God, they can you each imagine? Other. Yeah, but at the same time, that kind of hostility toward one another <laughs> would make excellent mm. running of that Queen Vic. TV Green, which is at Mook, J-N-W-S-W, says an older couple would be interesting. Not a copy of Frank and Peggy, but something a bit different to the characters that have owned it before. That's a good one. I Yeah, mm. I agree. A new new couple, just yeah, an older couple. I loved couple. it when it was Pat and Frank. Yeah, I, mm, yeah definitely. Yeah. It's such a warm feeling yeah. when I think of Pat and Frank. They were lovely characters. At Little Ms. Lost One says, if only Max didn't have the thing on the Vic roof, him and Rainey would be perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah, he probably doesn't want to set foot in there, does he? He, well, he's setting turn into a there. shrine, couldn't he? Upstairs, in the <laughs> roof garden, <laughs> an Abbey shrine, Abbey and um, a big neon Bradley. sign Don't of Abbey. Bradley. Oh yeah, forget that. Ab- yeah, quite a few things yeah. have happened to old Max on that yeah. roof, and though. Lauren, but she didn't die. Mm. <laughs> uh, at Dave Just Cor- career. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Skiing. A ski. <laughs> at Dave Corbett free, Alan Murray and his family would provide good drama for Ted. And he grew up in Wolford so he could have a history of Ian, Phil and a possibly returning Mitch Baker. There you go. See, Ted wasn't a silly option, really. No. Didn't think about his family. And his snotty sister. Um, they could bring his daughter. family back from Australia. The snotty daughter. Yeah. yeah. So it's another family package, mm. perhaps. The Murrays. The Murrays. The Murrays. And at HP Vegan says Masood and Kathy. That's it. Simple. Masood and Kathy. Oh, yeah. Someone else said um, Masood and Ian. And I was like, well... Could you imagine Masood's aunt and uncle? They'd be so annoyed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'd never be able to see him. Well, they couldn't step foot in no. the pub. They only did it that one time when they were packaging up Mick when he got shot. Kathy's too busy. She's got like 12 jobs. So Kathy's always working, as we've seen from Classic EastEnders. Mm. Always working. Yeah. So you can follow us on Twitter at EastEnders Week. And as I say, our poll of the week is, bro- is, our poll of the week is posted every Monday whilst EastEnders is uh, broadcast in the uk you can also find us on instagram at the eastenders weekly podcast you can email us eastenders weekly at gmail.com and don't forget also we have merch now and you can find it at shop.spreadshirt.co.uk slash eastenders weekly podcast original merch so go and have a look yeah. at it it's really good and as always we love getting your comments and we try to read out as many as we can on the show did you hear that downstairs <laughs>